Call our meeting to order for the evening. Uh, first off, I'd like to invite or uh, welcome you all to Paulsbo. Glad to have you here. Uh, Mike, uh, with great cultural sensitivity, has uh, gone down to Sly's and provided donuts from our uh, baking establishment that we have here. So oh, welcome not just to Pulsebo. What's that? Not just donuts. What else do we have? We have pecan muffins. We have um, almond <laughs> bar, not bars, almond, and um, what's the third one? I don't know. They're all delicious. And, and oh. so many people will be eating them. There's no carbs in them. So, Thank you for providing them. Uh, this is our first time where we ventured out of the hotel and to different uh, spots within our county. Uh, next time we'll be down in uh, Port Orchard. Uh, following that, we'll be out on Bainbridge Island. And so make sure that you're checking the website uh, before you come to a meeting so you know where we're going to be at. Uh, I just got back from a two and a half week road trip, and so that's going to be our question of the night as we begin. Uh, so, for the rest of the board, I'm wondering if there is a favorite uh, road trip that you have in your memory uh, that you would be willing to share. Ours went from Omaha, from here to Omaha, and Omaha is probably not the place you'd expect for a great road trip. Um, but uh, we needed to go down there, got to see some friends down there, and then up to Minnesota, where I'm from, for a couple of weeks. And uh, I love driving across the country and seeing the beauty um, from antelopes to bison to um, canyons to mountains uh, to big thunderstorms as you're driving down the road. Uh, so we had a, a great time. Other favorite road trips that you have out of your memories of your history? Well, I'll share mine. <clears throat> I've had a bunch of them, but uh, the one that really uh, stands out in my memory was back in 1957 when I was in the Air Force and drove from Anchorage, Alaska back down to Bremerton, traveling the Alcan Highway. And it was uh, in March, uh, so it was still uh, snow-packed roads. It was, uh, the roads stopped being paved in, uh, right by the border up in, in uh, Alaska and Canada. And so it was dirt road all the way down to uh, major uh, Calgary, I think it was, where we came in. So it was a, a very exciting trip uh, and uh, a lot of memories. Thank you for sharing. Aaron? Too much driving, but um, probably, was it the 84 the Olympics were in LA? And I was living in the Bay Area, and, and I'd been a competitive horseback rider growing up, and my riding instructor was riding in the LA Olympics. So we had many adventures as only young people in their early 20s can, and slept on many floors <coughs> and couches, but had a great time, and she won a gold and a silver. So it was worth the drive back and forth to LA. Wow. Yeah. Uh, when we moved to Seattle back in 1990, we drove from Maine to Seattle and took six weeks doing it and had a great time. Saw, saw all the sights. And me. Let's see, probably the one that stands out was when I first joined the Navy, me and three other sailors went from San Diego all the way to uh, Damneck, Neck, Virginia. <laughs> and oh. you can have a lot of fun when you're 19 years old and doing that. And headed to Damn Neck, Virginia. Yes. It was a lot of fun. Good. Uh, Mike. Yeah, our family was, I was born in Shelton and our family was headquartered in the Northwest, but dad took a, a job with the United States Gypsum Company in Chicago. So dad and granddad had bought property out on Hood Canal, so it was committed that on summertime we were going to go back to and spend it on Hood Canal. So in alternate years, we either took a train or drove. So we drove every major highway and took every major train line between Chicago and Seattle in order to get to uh, Hood Canal. And uh, they were all exciting and wonderful. Even the one where the train derailed in Montana, 
Uh, fortunately, out of the 13 cars, eight went off the track. Our car was in the middle of the last five that stayed on there. But uh, that was an exciting part. You know, you don't, you don't get in a train wreck very often. Wow. All right. Um, thank you for entertaining that question. Uh, I'd like to move now to the approval of the minutes. Uh, can I have a motion for that? I'll move we approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. I'll second. Uh, any comment? I did want to uh, point out uh, for the Paulsbo Event and Recreation Center under pros uh, that uh, several also mentioned the synergy working with OC and Western Washington University instead of Washington State University. Okay. I'm sure Cougar fans would want to make sure that uh, it was Western Washington University. I will make that correction and note it in the minute. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Approve the minutes. Uh, do we have the sign-up sheet for the public comment? Yes, it's been circulating around. Let me pick that up. like to invite up uh, Dr. Aaron Prince from Central Kitsap Schools. Uh, we'll have the same uh, time of three minutes for each person who'd like to make public comment. Uh, welcome, Dr. Prince. Thank you. Good evening. This month I took over as superintendent of the Central Kitsap Schools, and I'm new to Kitsap County from Oregon and have been very impressed by what I've learned so far about the efforts to seek collaborative partnerships between our schools, our district, and our community. I appreciate this opportunity to share our vision for the Central Kitsap Event Center and its potential as destination for education, athletics, and events for the whole community and our region. The proposed funding of $2.81 million would help us increase access to the CK campus for the whole community. The funding will be used to improve our athletic complex and our lower campus. On the lower campus, the funding will help us create a cultural zone and an outdoor amphitheater. These areas would provide our community with additional performance spaces to support local music groups, as well as community meeting rooms and music practice rooms. Additional parking would support hosting events on the lower campus. At the athletic complex, the funding will provide restrooms and a concession stand ticket booth. These amenities will allow our community to take full advantage of the new grandstands and the athletic facilities. This KPFD investment would allow us to host, host large regional and state sporting events, as well as regional and state music and drama events. Very few competitions are held in Kitsap County today. Hosting them here means visitors from outside the county will bring their resources and will patronize local restaurants, shops, hotels, and service stations. It also means residents of Kitsap County will keep their money home rather than spending money in other locations, not to mention the enhanced experiences shared by all. I am encouraged by this proposal because I believe it will provide unparalleled opportunities for our region and because I believe this partnership will meet the goals of KPFD, economic development, the efficient use of public and private monies, innovation, and multiple uses of facilities. Thank you for your time. Dr. Prince, thank you, and welcome to the community. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, next is Kathleen Wilson, uh, representing the Kitsap Regional Library. Welcome, Kathleen. Hi, 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Kathleen Wilson. I'm the branch manager at the Port Orchard location. And I just wanted to speak for a few minutes about the physical um, aspects of the building that we have currently down in Port Orchard for our library. Um, we are right on the water, which is lovely, right downtown, which is where we want to be. Uh, but the building that we are currently in um, is owned by the city of Port Orchard, and it was built to be a post office. It was never intended to be a library. So in the 60s, it was the post office. Um, and then uh, in the 80s, when they built the new post office, the library um, moved down Sydney into, into the building where we are now. Um, but because it was built as a post office, we have a lot of issues that are not meeting the needs of our current library users. So um, we have about 8,000 square feet, but that is really chopped up. We've got the front section that was the old post office where we have our computers and we have our restrooms that were intended to be the employee restrooms for the post office staff. Um, so that's not our biggest problem, but definitely one of them. And then we have our uh, fiction section that is in our loading ramp, the po former post office loading ramp, um, and our children's area um, is an addition that was put on in the 90s, and it is lovely with windows that look out onto the water, but um, the sight lines are terrible. You can't see back there from, our, from the front of the building. And that's where we also have our meeting room, um, which is very inadequate for our current users. It seats about 40 for a meeting, um, and that just is not meeting the needs of our community at all. We squeeze a lot of kids in there for kids programs, um, but as far as being able to support our business community, and especially um, those small businesses and those one-on-one -on -one meetings that are happening all the time now in our gig economy, uh, we don't have a single small meeting space. Um, and this is a problem, you know, citywide in Port Orchard, we don't have a place to hold events, we don't have a place to hold meetings, um, and we don't have a place in the library to support our small business um, uh, members and our and our small business community because we don't have a place for just having those uh, for a salesperson to just have a quick meeting with a client um, and we would really we're so excited to be part of this um, partnering and uh, the potential to have this event center in Port Orchard we feel like um, remaining downtown is a great opportunity for the library because we feel that we are very valuable to the economic development downtown we're um, essential to all of the activities that are going on that are bringing uh, tourists and our, um, and our citizens downtown, um, and we want to continue that, but we would just really love to be able to serve um, the users uh, of the library and our community now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is David, is it Bonet or Bonnet? Bonnet. Welcome, David. My name's Dave Bonnet. I live about three miles down the road on a little farm that we came to own in 1977 here in Kitsap County. Navy brought me like I understand some of you got here. I also own property in Mason County and uh, we have a family cabin down there that we've had for many, many years. And the reason I'm here is uh, I wanted to go on record as saying that I'm a bit confused by the Circus Northwest uh, funding that you all have undertaken uh, for several reasons. The first is um, because I pay taxes in both counties and know that there's already a racetrack that's pretty similar in, in Mason County, why would we spend 10 more million dollars to have something very similar here? I don't know the answer to that. I have friends and relatives that race. I don't, don't really have an interest in doing that. But the expenditure of public funds, my tax dollars, for something that I feel should be a private enterprise um, is, is bothersome to me. I don't know what the resolution is. I know that you still have to go through some process of decision making to uh, further the support you're giving through the port. At the end of last year, I studied up on this a little bit when I saw it in the newspaper. That's why I know about it. So 
I'm all for racetracks. I don't care how many you have for, per square mile. The, the new, new proposed one's 30 miles from one that looks to be pretty similar and is expanding dramatically. So uh, that's my say. Thank you. Next up is Brian Nilsson, uh, representing Circuit of the Northwest. Welcome, Brian. It's great to be here. Thank you. Um, I'd like to pass out a letter that will clear up some misinformation that has been circulating around. Um, and if I, do you have copies? Can you can you pass that letter out? Oh, okay. They have a copy, and you know, I, let me address the 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 public private aspect of this project really quick. I know this is regurgitating some information, so I'll keep it brief. 72% of this project is private. 28% of this project is public. Those public dollars will go into public facilities owned by the Port of Bremerton, our public partner. Those public facilities are mainly the EVOC areas that no other facility can handle. Um, and also, we have a uh, event area that we plan on doing events um, at the facility that require FIA and FIM homologation. No other track in the state has that designation. So real quick, um, some really good news. Um, welcome my team from back east. Um, we do have some industry experts if the board has any questions at all to clear up any misinformation that's been circulated. Um, some really exciting news is we just received some drone um, approvals under 300 feet um, at Circuit of the Northwest. So we will be able to, to test drones. Uh, first responders will be able to get trained. Um, th this this industry is just exploding. So um, we're really excited to have that. There's only uh, one of eight trainers in the nation, and, and we have one of those um, here uh, in Silverdale. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I'd like to hand that out to the board as well. Do you have copies of that? And I just thank you for your time. Uh, once again, it's, it's uh, my pleasure to work with the PFD. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, next is Mike Merrill. And Mike, Good evening. Uh, can you also state who you're representing? It's the Sheriff's well, Office, right? I'm Mike Merrill with the Sheriff's Office, but I'm basically representing all emergency services from here in Kitsap County. Okay. Basically letting you know, as, as I've stated before, just for the emergency vehicle operations for law enforcement for West Sound Regional EVOC, we have approximately 15 agencies that train with us. And I'm just here to reiterate how important it is for us to have a local facility that we can train at as we do now. Trying to train 15 agencies from throughout the peninsula um, and our closest um, workable spot that we would have at this point would be Washington State Patrol Academy, which is about 39 miles from Bremerton. And the logistics of trying to move all the materials that we need to, cars, cones, everything else, to that facility that's really set up for law enforcement um, is a huge nightmare. So I just wanted to, the, the sheriff is, is very in favor of this project, would like to see it stay local as well as the other training facilities that we would have their classrooms then the prospect of possibly having an indoor range um, is absolutely huge not only for um, law enforcement to be able to train in but for the public in Kitsap County as well so again it was more to reiterate that the <coughs> sheriff is very on board with this project and would really like to see it stay local thank you for your comment Mike. thank you very much all right, next up is Jerry McDonald. Welcome, Jerry. Good evening, thank you. 
I just kind of want to mention, I, I didn't make the last meeting, but I'm disappointed in the KPUD's dis indecision on the Circuit of Northwest financing package. You funded through the Port of Bremerton to the tune of about $500,000, if I remember correctly. As far as I know, they have done everything they've been asked to do. This delay has, has created, uh, may cost them another year in construction due to the funding delays and construction window, which really is not good for that project. This project is furthest along and most complete than any of the other projects that you're, complete, that, that you're considering. I think they've been at this for two or three or four years. It's been a long time. None of these projects that have suddenly appeared will benefit the community like the circuit for the Northwest. The jobs, education benefits to include engineering, <coughs> pilot training, manufacturing, uh, all kinds of things will be offer a great boost to the Olympic College program. We're, we're working with Olympic College for a pilot training class. It'd be, we'd have a building there. They've got an engineering class or WSU there on campus with the racetrack and the artificial intelligence things that's, that are coming into the, the automotive industry. It'd be a great place for a test track as well as the education side of that. It'll draw outside companies to, the, to uh, Kitsap County to increase our technology base. The track will help Port Orchard, Bremerton, and many of the out surrounding communities economically. This really is a win-win for everybody economically. I would very much like to encourage you to continue your funding as much as you can. Uh, it would be wonderful if they could start construction now You've already spent over a half million dollars on this project, and I believe they've passed all of their tests. Please continue funding this program this year. The sooner they start the dirt work, the sooner the community will, will benefit. And, and I, I, I don't think summer's here yet, but it's getting close. And uh, so if, if you can, at least Give them another little package so they can start the actual dirt work. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Jennifer Maria. Jennifer, who are you representing? I am with the Mason County Economic Development Council. Um, I just wanted to start by saying it really is a rare opportunity where you get to actually handle and decide as the stewards of this funding where the money is going to go and what it is going to benefit very directly. And when, you, when you're considering a private business, I really think that you need to look at it as a regional impact. This, this um, Circuit of the Northwest is proposing a regional project project when you currently already have a facility that is longer, more dynamic, already currently um, houses many emergency vehicle trainings and um, is working to build its STEM program as well. I think you need to look at what that impact will be if you publicly fund a private business and what that will impact a p privately funded business currently you are looking at using those dollars to essentially kill that business. You, no matter how wealthy you are, your business is not going to be able to compete against you know, so many, many dollars that you guys already have. Um, I want you to really think about the intent of what public facility districts are for. Is it the job of these districts to fund a private business when there are current facilities within a half hour drive that are successful all on their own? They've, Im they've influenced, they've input, and they've invested in their business the way we are supposed to do as private business owners. This is these districts are not here to do what private has already shown that it can do. There, there is no need for public funding. It's a business model that's already proven successful while privately funded, 100%. The emergency, um, the emergency vehicle training question, um, Tracy from the Ridge will, will address, but 
it is already happening at the Ridge Motorsports. Um, there is nothing different or unique about the proposed site. I want to really ask you to consider what the intent of these dollars really is if it is to build opportunity and services for your community members. I look at the other proposals and I think, yes, that is what a public facility is. Your parks, your recreation centers, your aqua centers, those things that don't necessarily um, fund themselves that need that need that assistance. Is that thank you. Thank you. Next up is Karen Leaf. Welcome, Karen. Who are you representing? I'm with the Economic Development Council of Mason County. Um, I have some invitations uh, for you. The Economic Development Council is holding a membership appreciation and drive August 1st at the Ridge Motorsports Park. Um, I think that it would be beneficial for you to come and see what it is that we've been talking about, a multi-million dollar publicly funded, or, sorry, privately funded racetrack that is just a short drive. Um, I think that, I don't know, I, I hope that it would help you in your decision to know that you've already got something so successful and wonderful, a very short drive from you. So my email address and my phone number is on here. So RSVP, I hope that you can make it. To everyone here also is invited to come and check it out. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Tracy. Or excuse me, thank you, Karen. Thank you. Uh, next up is Tracy you know? Schmidt. When is it? August 1st. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Tracy, who are you representing? Uh, the Ridge Motorsports Park. Um, I think with all these discussions that have been going on between, you know, what the Ridge is capable of offering and what they're currently offering and even the Circuit of the Northwest, we're not against anything. It's just we're very passionate about something we've been trying to provide for the whole surrounding community with privately funds. And you have two owners that have invested everything they had to make sure they were creating something great for everybody. And there's only, no matter what words are used or what's put in front of you, motorsports is it's a niche industry. And if you put a facility against another facility that's 30 miles away where you have so many dates to utilize to rent out your dates, to do school days, to do EVOC training, to do national events, you're taking from that same pie. You're taking from that same business model. So I know there's been a lot of direction with STEM programs and EVOC training. We do do EVOC training. We have the city of Olympia out there, Tumwater Police Department, Lacey, Thurston County. We do medical service training. We have over 300,000 going to over 400,000 square feet of skid pad. We have a road course that they use for their training as well. We're in the process of building a 10,000 square foot building that'll open in a couple months here that has a training center and classroom. Regards to education training, we've already been in the works of working with a bunch of programs, but we're very quiet about things until we have everything 100%. That way when we go ahead and provide it to the public, it's done and it's in place. And what you've seen on our social media has proven that. But we have a heavy equipment program to where it offers corporate events for people, but it offers training for the kids in our community to give them a base certification before they go out into the work field. So it gives them base heavy equipment training before they move on. And we have other school programs as well, but it's hard to build this grand overview of what we're currently offering in three minutes when we're able to come out here and talk with you. The facility is privately funded. If CNW were to go do national events, your, your surrounding community has to be able to hold those events and support it in order for you guys to sustain all those economic dollars from it. If not, they go out of town, they go to Tacoma. If you have a huge national event, if you don't have enough hotels, enough food or any of that, your public funds go into something that could potentially be going out into another area and it ends up supporting them instead of you locally. So privately funded, we're able to try to keep building what we have, keep it in the community until our community can keep building up to support all of that, including the surrounding community. So our whole goal has just been to educate what we currently have in place, to be an informational platform as well, and to know that 
we talk to these clubs every day. We also talk to colleges. We also talk to different educational platforms. And we're currently building a successful program that supports everybody, all communities, privately funded with two investors that have <clears throat> they put everything into this. So thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Next up is Tom Goodlin. Welcome, Tom. Who are you supporting? Uh, thank you. I'm a, a Bainbridge Island resident. And I spoke to you briefly, I think it was March 25th, when the Park District made their presentation on the aquatic facility pool. And uh, just came back to say that uh, since then, there's been a committed, uh, dedicated group of us that continue to work behind the scenes. Uh, we're getting community outreach and fundraising materials together. Uh, we've got a website in development that's almost ready, uh, other materials for doing the fundraising, and we're organizing to get a committee under the uh, Bainbridge Parks Foundation going. And uh, so uh, still here to support the pool and looking forward to see how you can contribute to that. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Next up is uh, Michael Pollock. Or Pollock, sorry. You know, I've been called a lot of different things. Po <laughs> Pollock is the Pollock, one. sorry, Michael. <laughs> Jay Gazinski. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, thank you all for being here tonight, first of all. Um, I'm, um, as I just mentioned, my name is Michael Pollock. I'm with the um, Bainbridge Island Parks District. I'm a commissioner there. Um, and I'm just here also to so show support for the proposed pool um, as exciting as it is in terms of a recreational perspective, what I'm really excited about is the economic benefit that I think it can bring to, to the local economy. Um, there's certainly a lot of need for that in here, in particular in the wintertime, to have things like uh, restaurants and, and, and hotels and such have the influx of visitors to stay open and to be part of the, the um, economy on a full year basis. So. Um, not, not a lot to say other than that. I just really encourage you to support it, and I'll leave it to you with that. Thank you, Michael. Uh, last is Larry Stokes. <clears throat> Larry Stokes. Larry, who are you representing? I'm Larry Stokes. Uh, I'm a commissioner for the Port of Bremerton and also a citizen of Longtime citizen of uh, South Kitsap. Uh, what I want to bring to your attention is uh, uh, first off, you're not putting money into a racetrack. You're putting money into public facilities. The racetrack part of it is going to be public funded, uh, public funded or uh, privately funded. That being said, They've been racing on the old runway out there since 1955. In fact, my wife remembers being out there with her old boyfriend in a 1957 Chevy pickup. And uh, anyway, different guy. But that's the real world. And way, where we're at at the port of Bremerton right now is we're in a position where we're going to have to close that runway. FAA says that that is not the thing to be used in that runway for. That runway at that area is to be used for uh, commercial development in the airline business and so on and so forth. So it's going to be closed. And, it's, and they've known that a long time. But the time has come where it's going to be closed and it's going to be closed in the near future. It's hard for me to understand how a different county would come up here and tell us how to run our business. And, you know, in this world, competition creates excellence. And if I look at a, uh, a uh, Walgreens drugstore, what do you see straight across the street? You see a Rite Aid. It's competition. And I think both can survive, and I think both can survive very well. If this doesn't go, and if we close that uh, runway and what have you, and if we lose the lease that the Port of Bremerton has uh, is under right now and have been for seven years, we're going to be losing a lot of income to the taxpayer. The lease that we have and the agreement that we have with Circuits of the Northwest is a long-term lease, and 
a 5% of the gross if this materializes and so on and so forth. So uh, there is going to be a racetrack on the other side of the street out at the airport. There's going to be one, and uh, it's going to be privately funded. The thing they're wanting to do is they want the public parts of it, the, uh, uh, the STEM area and the different things like that. That's where they're asking you to, uh, uh, to support. I thank you for your time. I understand you have a hard decision, and uh, uh, we'll just go along with whatever you say, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Larry. All right, that is the end of our public comment. Um, as we go into our uh, ongoing business, I do want to say um, again uh, thank you to the city of Paulsbo for providing this space to us. Um, thank you in advance to uh, the uh, commissioners, we will be in the commissioners' chambers on July 29th, and so we'll be down in Port Orchard for that one. Uh, but we are trying to uh, move our meetings around the county to get better uh, public involvement, and so we thank you for your comments. We also want us to say thank you to the Kitsap Sun for writing the letters that have made citizens aware of the different uh, issues that we're looking at. So thank you all for your involvement in this process. Uh, for ongoing business, Mr. Chair, uh, yes. May I have the permission to address the board? Uh, sure. Okay. In your packet, before we get into the specific items, there are um, three things. One is a description of bonding issues that were raised at a previous meeting, specifically um, what would be the cost of the bonds if they were retired early and what kind of penalty that would be. And the other was um, what the potential cost of not being able to have our bonds sold through the county. And uh, both of those issues were not addressed uh, significantly at the last meeting, so I wanted to bring that up to you again. Um, basically, the cost of refunding the bonds either uh, early or when they're ready to be refunded in 2021. Um, the difference is relatively small. It's about $150,000, which is small change when you're dealing with bonding for millions. The second is a little more significant. The estimate that was provided to us by uh, the folks at Key Bank Capital Markets was that it could be as much as $10 million difference from having the county sell bonds, having us sell the bonds on our own. In other words, we'd have $10 million less dollars to invest in county facilities. So um, that just puts a little more emphasis on trying to work out some kind of an arrangement with the county. The other couple of items, one is the latest revised schedule for the evaluation timeline. And the last was something that um, Rick Smith had asked me for, and that was uh, a listing of how much money had gone to each of the existing regional pro projects from their inception in 2004 to the current time. And that's provided there from the original $11 million plus in 2004 uh, through the ensuing years, another $3 million has been invested, um, half of that into the North Kitsap Regional Event Center facility and a couple of other uh, expansions on other facilities, but uh, you get a, an estimate there. It's probably within a couple hundred thousand dollars. It may not be the, the definitive number, but that will give you an idea of what has been invested in the existing facilities to date. Just wanted that to be bring to your attention before we started into the uh, specific 
items on the agenda. All right, thank you. Uh, first, uh, go ahead. My, my, you, you have an extra copy of the revised timeline. I, I don't see that in my folder either. Uh, second sheet. This, this one right here, the colored one? Yes, that, and that is something that Mike has created, correct? Yeah. It should have been clipped together in, in under it's one. The second page of oh, yeah. the back page or something. Like yeah, it's, oh. and it's right before the information that uh, Rick had asked. I got it. I was looking at the back page. Oh. Got it, Pat? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, the 4A, our blanket voucher for the director's stipend. Um, Mike, would you like to say anything in regards to this? I think the main thing is um, uh, I apologize. This should have been taken care of at the beginning of the year. This uh, blanket voucher covers the first half of the year. So basically through the end of the June meetings. And uh, each one in that packet there is a, a form called a TC50 form, which is the uh, expense form. And it's in Darren's packet. It's not in your individual packets. So when that comes around for signatures, you need to sign your copy of the TC50 as well as the blanket voucher after that's approved. All right, moving on to 4B, approval of the... Well, that does not need to come up for a vote. A vote. It does need to come up for yeah. a vote, okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please? We're talking about the uh, voucher? Uh, yes. I'll move to approve payment of 4,233.74. And a second? Second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to 4B, approval of uh, the Northwest Municipal Advisors um, Consulting Agreement. Mike, would you speak to this? Okay, the, um, the original consent agreement was in a packet previously. What Brian has done as basically written a, an agreement from the KPFD to the Northwest Municipal Advisors and attached their engagement letter as an appendix or an addendum. Um, we will be meeting with the uh, principals of Northwest Municipal Advisors on Tuesday, tomorrow, and if you approve this form of the agreement, then uh, the executive committee can sign that tomorrow and we can initiate the agreement between the financial advisor that the board has selected. There is only uh, one item on there which is in question. It's highlighted in yellow, which is defining what the cap on the expenses of a bond offering might be, and uh, we will define that tomorrow uh, and put that into the agreement so that it can be assigned if it's approved by the board. Are there any, well, uh, can I have a motion first <clears throat> to approve this consulting agreement? I move we approve the contract with Northwest Municipal Advisors. And then a second? Second. And then is there any discussion or any questions? How again do we calculate the capped fee? Pardon? How's the calculation on the capped fee done? I don't know that I can answer that effectively. They have said that they would have an amount, and I believe it was 17,000 or 20,000 up to 20 million dollars and if we bond for more than that then there's an adjusted uh, amount and but depending upon how much we bond if we bond through the county 
Um, it may be different, so I can't define exactly what that be, but we'll need to iron that out with uh, the executive committee and the advisors tomorrow. But it's based on what they had in their proposal? Yes. Okay, got it. Any other discussion or questions? <coughs> All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Uh, contract agreement approved. Selecting the bond council. Um, we have a choice between Foster Pepper and Hills Clark. Pacifica Law has withdrawn uh, because of their uh, relationship that they um, serve uh, the county and so uh, took themselves out in in advance of any difficulties there um, but as far as foster pepper uh, or hills uh, clark uh, discussion um, from the board as to uh, which one you would like to go with well i think uh, Foster Pepper is the uh, the best equipped to deal with our with our uh, bond issue. Um, they did a, a a good presentation and clearly knew the uh, all of the uh, issues of surrounding uh, public facility districts and and um, had some experience already. With it, so. Yeah, I think they had far more experience with PFDs. Yes, they did. Any other comment? Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, retain Foster Pepper as our bond counsel. Oh, I'll second. Uh, any discussion? They also did, rep, as Bill uh, referenced, they also did represent us our first time um, that we that we went to bond. Um, all right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, uh, we've selected Foster Pepper. We'll now move into the evaluation of projects and we have two projects left tonight. Um, how about right before we uh, go into this discussion, why don't we take a three minute break here, or five minute break and help yourself to slice and uh, we'll come back together in five minutes. Call especially our board members uh, back to your seats. All right, uh, we're to the point of the meeting where we're going to go to our evaluation of projects. Uh, we'll use the same format that we've used for the first five projects. Um, as we're starting, I do want to give a shout out and a word of thanks to James who is filming tonight for BCAT and so this will be uh, publicly broadcast and uh, will be available as well for people to watch as we go through the decision making process. The first uh, project that we have up to discuss is Bainbridge Island Parks District Aquatic Center and if you haven't been with us before uh, we go from one board member to another and just discuss the pros and the cons that we see in each project so that we can also hear each other as to what we're thinking. Uh, I will lead us off again uh, for the Aquatic Center. Uh, the pros that I see are to have the best Aquatic Center in the state is something pretty special. Uh, I think it's unique. Um, I think it's really good. Uh, I do think it will draw tournaments. Um, just from other friends of my kids who I know who do water polo or swimming. Um, we have a number of swimmers in the area who have been 
very competitive at the state level and swim clubs that have been very competitive uh, in that uh, sport. Um, and so I think it would receive a lot of use. Um, another positive is it gets kids and adults both out of the house. It gets them active. It gets them healthy. It gets them connected. And I do think it's good to have indoor facilities as well in our um, climate that we live in. Cons that I see with it is I'm, all, I'm I guess I'm just still surprised that even if it is the best facility in the state that it will probably continue it will continue over year over year to lose money that that is just what happens with uh, pools um, uh, that are that have some heat to them uh, and uh, it comes with a huge price tag is another con uh, 15 million is the commitment that we're being asked for it's a large commitment and it um, uh, will earmark most of our money uh, to one project. And so uh, that is a con that I see as well. I'll let you take it in whatever order you'd like. I'll, I'll talk next. I'm, uh, <clears throat> the pros I see for it is it does have the uh, active support of the uh, park district from Bainbridge and their stated willingness to sell bonds to help uh, pay for uh, a portion of it. Uh, I think it makes good use of the existing facilities and, and that some of the existing pool will also um, be used. And I think it would be wonderful if we could host uh, regional uh, meets. I, I guess uh, um, you know, a pool, pool that has meters instead of yards, uh, they're, they're few and far between, none as I understand on, on this side. So that would be a plus for us. The cons are much uh, the same as what uh, Darren has said. The money that they're uh, asking for probably will be half or well over half of uh, what we're able to uh, what we're able to bond. Uh, you know, we can do two or three of the other projects for what uh, the Bainbridge Island is asking for uh, for the pool. Uh, and I guess I guess that's it. I'll go next. Um, I'll I'll start first with the cons. And Darren, I agree that it's a it's a hefty price tag. Um, to me, that's that's the only con. Um, personally, you know, I I, I live in a swimming <coughs> a swimming family, uh, though not not a swimmer myself. My Wife is a high school swim coach. She's an accomplished master swimmer. Um, two of my three kids are swimmers. Um, though, personally, again, uh, none of my kids would see this pool uh, themselves, except if they were to return home from school or their subsequent lives. But um, this is a real opportunity for the, for the county to put itself on the map as not only locally but regionally um, and not only regionally but I think from a, a state perspective there there's incredible demand not only locally but throughout the state for long course swimming um, the only 50 meter pool is the King County Aquatic Center which is impossible to book um, I know that the the Bainbridge Island Swim Club BISC recently traveled to Wenatchee and they go there for a week and you know spend the, their nights in hotels and eat out at restaurants um, so they're spending lots of money uh, but that's that's the state of the of, of the of the sport right now is that there are limited resources for a lot of demand um, I think for the city of Bainbridge Island it would be a huge windfall um, I do recall one of the restaurant owners who spoke uh, early on at our hearing saying that they struggle nine months out of the year in hopes of making it to the summer. And this would help round out our economy. Um, and I think it would bring a lot of people from outside the county, outside the region, into the, into the city. Thank you. I guess I'll go next then. <clears throat> I have pretty much the same that everybody else does. The cost is one of the cons. It is expensive. I also don't, 
It'll be well used by the group that uses it, I'm sure, probably extensively, but I think most of the county won't even know it's there, to be honest with you. It's such a small group, I think, that uses that. I don't think you get people coming from Central Kitsap or Port Orchard <clears throat> to come up to use the pool. Uh, one of the big pluses is it is going to be maintained by the Park District, which is good. I'm sure that it will be maintained very well by them. <clears throat> the other ones I have are pretty much the same as everybody else for the pros and cons. If I could add one more point, too, uh, you know, with people like Mr. Goodman here that um, has volunteered his time, there, there's a, a large grassroots movement on the island, um, and, and these people are very motivated. They're donating their time and resources, and, and there's a, a private funding movement underway that I think will be very successful. Okay, I'll go um, I ha I'm in agreement with what's been said here before, so I'll just read through my pros and cons. Um, it is a unique, it shouldn't be unique, but it is unique for the state of Washington. It would be great to have something like that on in Kitsap. Um, looking at the five and a half million that's earmarked for, as private funding, they show half a million coming in from Rotary and the possibility that the school district, school district may partner on a bond also. Um, a big part, I thought it was mentioned again tonight, and you talked about the early restaurateur that said that this would help stabilize the revenue stream that goes through the island in, in the quieter winter months. So those are my pros. Cons, it's the price tag. Um, we don't yet know how much money we'll have. $14 million will be a substantial amount of it. Um, I don't really like the, we know it's going to be a negative cash flow, and we've got you know, we're sure we can pay for that. And I, I do agree that the, um, the department would, I mean, if they're planning on paying that negative cash flow, no ma matter what, but it, it makes me feel bad on a business point of view to be creating something that we know loses money no matter what. Um, and the concept that there could be a couple other projects that we could bond for that kind of money bears in mind for me also. I would say um, um, the eye to all the pros and the excitement of the potential. Uh, I think it's a little uh, premature for us to make a decision on a project this size. We, have, we don't even really know how much money we're going to have. <clears throat> um, and one issue that I would like to know more about, uh, if this uh, project is as successful as... Um, has been indicated because there's only one such uh, pool in all of Western Washington, or maybe the state. Um, an awful lot of people come here, and I have I want to know more about the parking potential or facilities that will be there for this. Okay, um, well I looked at this like I did the other projects, so economic development. This project, when completed, will be a destination for competition swimmers throughout Western Washington. Uh, proponents claim swimmers looking for Olympic size pool to practice will be used uh, every week. The economic value with this project is through uh, development of facilities, activities that bring tourism to Kitsap County. The project will definitely accomplish that goal. Innovation. The layout is very, of this pool is very innovative in that it provides the opportunity uh, for the local community to use the pool for recreation swimming at the same time swimmers uh, are using it for training for competition. Community benefit. The community will benefit in two ways with this project. First, it is it provides an updated swimming pool with the opportunity for more swimming programs. And secondly, the project will stimulate local business through uh, tourism opportunities, which we've heard. Effective use of public and private funds. 
Public funds used in this project will be supplemented with uh, grant funds and with uh, local tax dollars. Comments, this is a good project that is sized right for Bainbridge Island community. It will provide economic development through tourism and will, but will not overpower the community. So um, with regard to the cost of the project, as I understand it, the uh, Bainbridge Park and Recreation District will be uh, uh, putting a bond in front of the, uh, uh, the voters in, on Bainbridge Island to determine if they support this project. So I'm not really concerned right now about the uh, overall cost because I think we have an opportunity to work with the uh, Park and Recreation District to, uh, to size their bond issue uh, that would be complemented by whatever funds we might be able to uh, provide to them. So I think it's um, a little um, premature to say this is not a good project because of the total cost. I think it's worthy of keeping it uh, on board um, and working with the, the, uh, the Bainbridge Island Park District to see what kind of uh, resources they'll be able to come up with in, in the way of a bond issue. And if, if they build this, I think they have a track record of um, taking care of their facilities, and I don't think we have to worry about that a lot. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, Port of Bremerton's Circuit of the Northwest. The pros uh, that I have uh, are Brian Nielsen. Uh, uh, appreciate that he has been a long time uh, part of our county. Appreciate his passion for racing and the dream that he has in this project. Uh, the cons, though, that I see are that, um, as has been made a point uh, tonight again, uh, there is another raceway that isn't very far away that is a private entity and why are we giving uh, public money to a competitor uh, in an industry that is this difficult. The economic development portion of it, it sounds really great and I hope that it happens. I hope that the OEM that has um, been talked about does come in. Uh, but I think there's a lot of risk. I think there is a lot of uh, possibility that the dreams that are there for that don't actually come to fruition in the way that it is hoped for. At its core though, um, this is still a facility in my estimation uh, for people who are wealthy to drive their own cars and that's what the project started as. And then different public pieces were added in along the way. There's nothing wrong with that, I just don't want to give public money to a facility that serves private uh, uh, individuals and so I hope that the project can happen I just don't want it to happen with public funds okay <clears throat> uh, for the circuit of the Northwest uh, uh, it's probably further along in detailed planning and design uh, than uh, the majority of the other projects I like the, the idea that the Port of Bremerton uh, is an active partner. Uh, I think it will have uh, excellent economic payoff. We've we've heard that from a number of different people, including all of the uh, all the port commissioners uh, uh, over over time. Uh, I like the potential commitment from an OEM uh, manufacturer. Uh, we've heard how many co different constituencies it would serve and uh, with the possible exception of the Central Kitsap project it's probably the most shovel ready and we do need to do something to replace the functionality of the runway that will be uh, lost. The cons probably a different way of stating some of the concerns that Darren has had. There are objections to the private use component uh, it complicates our bonding uh, somewhat if we were to fund uh, this project. Bonding would have to be done very carefully.
to make sure that any money that we bond only goes for public use components. Uh, any private use component would carry a higher interest rate uh, because uh, it would not be eligible for the federal tax exemption. So we need to be very careful uh, what we fund if we fund uh, some portion of this project. And uh, inevitably, there will be some objection to Circuit of the Northwest as a neighbor because of noise, pollution, traffic, uh, one thing and another. Time to go. Next. Yeah, so um, we, we've had a lot of exposure to this project now uh, over the last year plus. Um, and I commend the, the group for all the work that they've done, they've done. And I also would recognize that there is a lot of support uh, within the public and private sector for this project. Um, for me, I have to look at it from two different perspectives. Um, one, as a business person, um, it seems like economically it's incredibly viable. Um, and I also feel from a taxpayer perspective um, that there is this gray area that we're uh, running up against that we need to make a decision on, you know, does public money fit with a private enterprise? Um, what does sway me is the fact that there's plenty of demand uh, currently, uh, given the current runway, from local fire and police jurisdictions. And um, I, I know that the city of Bainbridge Island Fire Department, for example, uses that facility currently and, and we stand to lose that and <laughs> you know from the perspective of the ridge does the ridge have the the facility and can they uh, accommodate the increased demand that that shutting down the the runway will create um, so I think to sort of sum it up um, we, we have as, as a board need to decide you know is the money that we potentially provide for, for this project like Walt, you say, can, can we ensure that it goes only towards the part of the of the project that that would be used for for public <laughs> entities? Okay, so I've done a lot of thinking about this project, and the economic development potential is huge. I mean, it really is. It could it could do a lot for the county. It will bring people into the county, I believe probably more than any other project. But with that said, I do have the same concerns some of the other board members have about using public dollars to help finance a private entity. That's tough for me to get around also. Also, I worry about what happens if the racetrack doesn't work out. I mean, is it just gonna be a $11 million piece of concrete out in the middle of nowhere that no one goes to? With some of the other projects, there's maintenance commitments by government entities that have to honor them. With this, I don't know what would happen to the facility if it went bankrupt, for instance, and that does concern me. You know, also, a lot of the talk about the public use seems to revolve around the government entities using it for their EVOC training. I don't know if that's a public use that is envisioned in this. I don't think you're gonna get a lot of ordinary people doing this and it's great for the government entities to get to do this but I haven't seen a lot where people are going to be able to just go out there and and use this so that's pretty much where I'm at Next. <clears throat> okay um, I think the portion of this that excites me most is this is something brand new to Kitsap, what this project entails would be something that's not currently here. We're not taking a use that's already here somewhere and making it bigger and better, which is great too. This is literally bringing something new to this county that we don't currently offer, and it does have a national um, draw to it that I don't see the other projects doing. I see regional draw on the other projects, but this one actually is national. I too am not a car person don't understand why anybody wants to watch cars drive around in circles, but I am very much a STEM person, and I'm very much a hands-on, let's train people to work in the trades. 
And with when we've talked about the private and public, and, and that's really been mulled over. I've only been on the board about a year and a half. Um, and we've watched this project develop more and more into addressing that issue be, because that's where our funding goes. We, we won't fund the private part. We cannot fund the private part. It's, it's just not, not in our cards. What we can do, though, is fund the public part. So I get really excited about the law enforcement. I like my police office to be well trained. Um, the STEM programs, the OEM manufacturers, that's, that's, could, that's gigantic. I mean, who knows where that's going to lead to? Um, we don't know. Um, I agree it's a big project. You know, will it be totally successful? I think any project has that unknown going into it. I've, um, seeing what all the professionals that have been involved to this point in developing it, um, the people that have come forward to speak and tell us exactly what's going to go on with it, how they've tweaked the project to make it work. Um, I have faith that they'll pull it off. The board of uh, Port of Bremerton, which is really our funding partner, they believe in the project enough to go in on a percent revenue on that. Um, that's their land. They could be doing other things with that land, but they've chosen that this is the best economic use for them. Um, I, I see it bringing. I see it doing what Bremerton Convention Center did for downtown Bremerton, the potential for a new hotel, um, the potential for fixing the road out front. It's going to have to get done eventually. We all know. Maybe Gorst someday, and I drive Gorst every day, so I can whine about it. Um, it is a grand vision, and I see a lot of other private money coming in to do that. There are other businesses that are not currently, such as hotels, that are not currently in this market, that this would, may be the draw that says, oh, now we really want to put a hotel in Bremerton, Port Orchard, Silverdale, whatever the deal is. Um, I, I've seen the momentum build on this project just in the year and a half that I've known about it. Um, I knew a little bit about it years and years back on it. So it's, it's not falling apart. I mean, it's had a lot of time to fall apart. If it was not a good project, it would have dissolved somewhere in, the, in these last years. <laughs> New to Kitsap. Um, the comment about maintenance by a public entity making, giving you a comfort level, which in theory is true, but I've been through, I work in real estate and I've been through, oh, God, too many d public downturns. And we up here see some public projects that are totally deferred maintenance because of the budget cuts at, at a city or county level. So I don't, it, it doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy to know that, um, that a public entity will take care of something because when they don't take care of something, it starts to fall apart, but they don't do anything with it because it's still owned by the public. Working in real estate, if a private entity doesn't do something, doesn't take care of something, loses value, the next guy comes along, he buys it at a lesser value, fixes it up and on it goes. I, I see more potential that if that were to happen, that this would still be able to resurrect and go under a new owner. No offense, guys. Not that I'm planning on you guys falling apart. But I, I always look at the worst case scenario. In some way, my, my cons are the same kind of my pros. Oh, someone's got to do a hotel. Well, that's not us. Someone needs to widen the roads. Um, and it, that it is a grand vision. That, that doesn't negate my, my support of it. And I do want to reiterate that, without a doubt, our public money would go only for the public portions of this. I know it gets talked a lot about that it, it, it could possibly do private, but that's not the idea here. That's not where we'd go with it. <clears throat> well, I share all the comments that are positive about this. It's a, very, it's a great vision. But I can't get past the fact that in the history of this Kitsap Public Facility District, we've never funded a private corporation. And I'm not at all sure how we can be so sure there, there will be uh, public things out there. The Port District is uh, signed a lease and have pledged 5% of the profit, 5%, it's a very modest amount. All of our existing projects, North Kitsap, Central Kitsap and, and Bremerton are supported by the city, the county, the school district, and the county. None are private, so I can't support this. I would add one further thing. Uh, I grew up in Kitsap County and Bremerton, and I too attended drag racing uh, when I was in high school. 
out there, and the new racetrack has no drag racing. And, and there's an awful lot of people that are still doing that. So that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, the Port of Bremerton is shutting down a current regional events center that occupies the inactive runway on the east side. As soon as they get the road built over there, they'll start leasing that property out to uh, air airport-related activities. This project will provide a home for 42 existing users, not only law enforcement, um, not only fire departments, but 42 users that come from this community. They, they draw approximately 100,000 visitors to the site. We're going to lose that if this project goes away. 100,000 existing people that come to Kitsap County or that live here visit this site annually. <coughs> the master plan, when completed, will draw an additional uh, 350,000 tourists to Kitsap County. Innovation, uh, working with the local school district, a STEM lab uh, would, will be built to provide training for students. This project will also bring an international OEM, in case you don't know it, that's a, a, a car manufacturer, and we have a letter from Honda that they're working with the Circuit of Northwest right now to locate here. Uh, that will bring, uh, uh, provide training, uh, a new product announcement, and sponsorship to Kitsap County. Community benefit. The community benefits from this project in several ways. First, this project provides a, a permanent home for the 42 users that currently use the inactive runway. And by definition, when you look at the RCW, uh, that site is a regional events center right now. It qualifies under the state law that, uh, that the uh, PFD is obliged to uh, follow. The users, uh, including training opportunities, uh, for law enforcement, fire, and, and uh, uh, transit operators uh, is, we've heard from all of them, and they all tell us that uh, if this shut down, they have to go elsewhere. Not one of them mentioned the Ridge Motorsport Facility. Why didn't they say, we'll go there, if that's where they can go? Not one of them mentioned that. Effective use of public and private funds. Public funds are used only for the area that will be utilized by the existing 42 users. That's the public part of this project. And that's what they're asking to be funded. I might remind you when, uh, I think Darren, you asked them what would happen if we uh, did not uh, honor their $10 million request but gave them less, and they provided us with a uh, letter that outlined their priorities. And every one of the funds that was in that letter was for public use. None of it, not one dime, went into the race rate. Not one dime. It went into the public elements of this project. Private funds are going to be used to construct the, the raceway. And guess what? We're in America. People invest money in projects that they feel after they study it and look at it that it's going to be a, a good project. They have the right to fail. I mean, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but in the United States, um, the, the, uh, when anybody invests money in a new business, they have the right to fail. But they also have the right to be successful. And government has never stood in the way of someone 
wanting to invest money in a, in a business. As a matter of fact, our, our laws are very clear about antitrust. In fact, you, you have an example in this town right here in, in Bremerton where private sector tried to stop a project, the Silverdale Mall, and guess what? They were sued for antitrust and they lost, uh, Bremerton Estate lost all of their properties in that, in that lawsuit. We, it's not our jo job to decide uh, whether or not uh, this might cause a problem from somebody that already exists. Might, might remind everybody, the, uh, I was port commissioner when the ridge was, was uh, open some 10 years ago. Did they come down and ask the, uh, the Port of Bremerton, are we going to be putting you out of business? Did anybody from the Port of Bremerton or from the uh, existing users go down and testify in Mason County that, hey, we already have this here, don't let them do that? No, they didn't do that. It's, this, this just amazes me. Um, comments. I believe this project... Uh, is exactly what the state legislature envisioned when they authorized public facility districts. I do want to uh, reiterate this: none of these monies that we're talking about will go into the uh, the private part of this project. It goes into the public part. I asked the bond council uh, if there's any uh, if if funding the Port of Bremerton to build these public facilities would be a problem uh, in terms of issuing bonds. He said no, it would not. Um, and lastly, Rick, there is going to be drag racing on this project. They testified that they would be doing drag racing a little bit different than what they're doing now. It would be Friday night drag racing to get the kids off the street, be eighth mile instead of a quarter mile, so there will be drag racing on this project. Really? Hmm? I understand. They, really. they testified to it. The cop when was they asked that they were asked that question. Oh, I have. Okay. Uh, thank you all for your comments on both projects. Uh, we're done with our sharing of our pros and cons on each project and where we're at in the process is for our next meeting, we'll come together and would ask that each of you would have the projects ranked numerically one to seven of what your top one is to what your bottom one is. What's number one for you, what's number seven for you, and everything in between. And uh, see where we're at as far as what kind of alignment we have and, and where the projects fall out within that ranking system and uh, have discussion off of that of how to proceed from there. For tonight, now we're going to move on to number six, new business. Uh, Mike, would you uh, speak to? Real quick. Yes. Will we know at the next meeting how much money we're going to have for funding? Uh, we will be, say that again, Mike? No. 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 Uh, I'm a little confused. I, so you're saying we'd only do the bonds for the amount of money we need now, and then with the potential for bonding more in the future? Is that why we would only go for the amount we decide now? Instead, I thought we were going the other way. That's why we figure out how much we've got available and then figure out what we can fund. Uh, 
objects that are shoveled in right. to do bond offering as quick as possible. While we're doing feasibility studies and figuring out what the best like next year. Got it. That's what I meant. So yeah. We did it all at once, and we had the capability to do it in two weeks. And it has been advisable to bond for that amount, $20 million, sitting until a right. year or a year and a half later. No, that's, that's why I asked that. And then the other part of that is we've talked about the fact that if we do through the county, if we partner with the county on this, that there's a potential for up to $10 million more to be invested in the county. When are we gonna initiate those conversations with well, the county? Yeah. We have to, we have a meeting tomorrow and then we'll proceed after that meeting. Okay, great. I think they'll be able to give us some scenarios under which we can approach the county with a set of conditions that are more conducive for them All right, on to number six, uh, approve IT upgrade. Mike, will you speak to what you would like to do? Yeah, and this is an upshot of that. Um, about two and a half or three weeks ago, uh, the Internet Connection and the IT Department of the Internet Department of the Internet Connection Department that we work myself, as I've worked in that industry for over 20 years. I couldn't fix it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Finally resulted from going to a IT company called the oh. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the IT company based in the I know the founders of the company. And so I asked them for help. in an hour. Uh, look foolish, but uh, he also advised me a that the computer I was Sorry, using was here. either Dell all in one. In other words, uh, the computer and the computer all in one piece. And for those I'm surprised Too hot when they deteriorate. Um, anyway, the point is that the computer that I was using was outmoded, low on memory, it's only got four gigs of memory. I recognize that it's going to be prone to these kinds of problems more in the future. The second thing he was, he advised that we upgrade. Hardwired firewall, not just a wireless protection firewall, but the kind of money that we have now and will have now, we're going to be a target for hacking that are just going to come out of the IT department. about 600 bucks, very reasonable. I checked um, the sites for comparable prices and they were all in the range of about 1,000 bucks. 
entire wall. Uh, and again, there are some places where you can get a Second part of that, there, there's definitely uh, recognize the four or five decades out of IT and intelligence. Can I have a motion to approve the IT upgrade and the service contract? So moved. I'll second. Uh, any discussion on this or any questions for Mike? I do have a question. Yep. Uh, so part of the time you spend on a desktop or a laptop and the other part of the time you spend on a smartphone. Yeah. Would that also protect you on your smartphone? And then the second question I would have is the fact that we all use PFD email addresses. Are we also susceptible to hacking or other nefarious activities? I don't know the answer to that at this time. There are VPN apps. Yeah. yeah. There are plenty of those that are necessary to uh, email conversations so that it needs to be an app on your phone. I thought we were doing that on the county system. No. No, it is not. <clears throat> Email was on one system, and the hosting of our website was on a different system. Now they're all basically under one roof. Real quick, looking on this, it looks like they charge 125 bucks an hour to do setup from whether we're on the service contract or not. So what's the advantage of contracting with them for one hour a month? Why don't we just pay them as we need them since it's the same price? Because, I mean, we might go three, four, five months without needing them, but we're still paying 125 a month. That's right. If we do need them, we're going to have to just pay them at that rate anyway. Well, it says 125 per hour, one hour minimum per month. So I'm assuming if they come in for three hours per month, they're going to charge us 125 per hour for each of the hours. Over and above the original hour. Yes, but we've already paid for that hour. But we for the first three time. Months.
Well, it looks like we pay 125 per month no matter what. Excuse me for a sec. Could you turn your microphone on, Mike? Uh, maybe I'm reading it wrong. Sorry about that. I thought it was on all the time. I read that contract the same way, too. That uh, there's 125 retainer, and then it's an hourly. Yeah. So we get that no matter what. And, and Patrick said, if we get three hours, we pay three yeah. So all we can do is pay him more with the monthly thing, because, I mean, we'll pay, we're paying for months we might not use. Whereas if we have to call him in for more, we're just going to pay the same rate. I, I had thought that they would give a discount if you're on a contract with them. On your hourly rate, than what his just regular hourly rate is. Well, I can ask for that. Does uh, that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can I ask? Uh, we'll do a friendly amendment to this motion, and I'll, we I'll will just withdraw the motion. Okay. And then, can I have a motion simply to uh, pay for uh, the new computer and for the firewall? Those two things, and Mike will enter into more discussions on the contract. So moved. Second. Any discussion with this? <coughs> All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. All right. So the services contract or whatever the replacement of that is, is tabled. Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any announcements or upcoming events? I guess I would remind you all that uh, we will be at the Commissioner Chambers for our next meeting on July 29th at 5.30 in Port Orchard. And then on August 12th, we will be visiting Bainbridge Island. So to have those uh, places on your calendar. Um, any other announcements that we have? I have none. All right. In that case, our meeting is adjourned. Hey, this is a great meeting for St. Paul's. Something from Darren. Yeah.